to everybody in East Boogie, to all my peeps here in Long, and back on to the Illy and everywhere. Let's do it, y'all. Whether evading the smoke or debating with folks, with APA in the quotes, that's making us roll. When the sports world is sleepy on the day or the week, we get it, boss. One ride, D, kid, dudes, and geeky. From hardwood to diamond, QD to ramen, on the up or the climbing, and all out shining, even on the ice grinding. A world record timing when the athlete or team moment really is defining. If the stats, stats, deal, or facts on deals, these cash chat real about the track and feel. Plus the wing, wink, and pool, all courts and courses, from unsigned players to stars with endorsements who only got deep. Teams that stop streets, who get in the dust and who own the hot seat for the movies and the oldies. Yo, they got the goodies, wanna know what's going on? Rock blame it on the boogie. Yep, 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 the boogie. Yep, the boogie. Click that link to subscribe. That's what it is. God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> to the Blame It On The Boogie podcast. First, before we start anything, we got a shout out to our boy Maurice, Reese Horton, for that for wonderful, bars. wonderful intro he did for us. For the bars. Good looking out, Reese. Good looking out. Good looking out. Um, As I said, this is Blame It On The Boogie podcast. Welcome to you know, what we do each and every week. Yeah. Uh, Today, we got a guest. We try to do it each and every week. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> it don't always, turn, it don't always turn out that way. <laughs> Before we get to that, this is season two, episode number eight, y'all. We want to thank y'all for continuing to be with us through two seasons. I mean, is that all together? I don't know, because I forgot how many we did the first year. <laughs> As you was just talking about all that great. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah, brother mine is the first thing we go. Yeah, brother, be forgetting. But uh, I think we did thirty. Did we did thirty three last year. I think it's not thirty something. So we on number forty if you count all together. Okay, just 40, we in the forties. That's all okay. I know. We in the forties. All right, we in the forties. Uh, but as y'all know, usually it's three brothers, all from East Boogie. But today, today we got our brother Tariq Ty Adams all the way. From where you at in Colorado? What part? Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs, Colorado. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna start this all over. Today we have with me Dorian D. Almighty, the Wonder Mouse Brown from Richmond, California. Mm-hmm. Hey man, <laughs> you know it got to stink, right? It, 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 everybody call you Wonder Mouse. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm mad too. Because my line name is Mighty Mouse. It's not one <laughs> mouse. But anyway, that's because of you. Hey, my bad, bro. But it's stuck, so I got I to gotta keep going with it. And that ugly skull cap. <laughs> I keep going. That's because I left my hat. So anyway, I, I don't have a, the, the nice clean shave <laughs> like Reek got down there. Hey. Uh, it, of course, like I said, we got, we got <laughs> coach. Nature is shaving you back. <laughs> That's, that's why this is down here instead of back here. <laughs> Nature's barber is lining right here. <laughs> that's, that's why the head is here and not back here. <laughs> so, do you know what you can do? Read between the lines, my boy. Um, <laughs> we got Coach Tariq Adams from Colorado Springs, Colorado. And of course, you got me right here, Rod D from the Detroit, Michigan. D double O Z E will be with us. A little dude's coming on a little bit later. He got he will be here later. He will be here later. He had to attend to first. Uh so we just gonna get on here and we're gonna get right to it. Our brother Tariq, Tariq, tell the people who you are, who you represent. Oh man, representing Colorado College out here. Division three men's basketball uh, assistant coach. Um, been doing this. I just finished up my third season out here um, with with the college man. Uh, loving every minute of it. So uh, started out coaching uh, women's basketball at high school. Did that ten years, and then made this jump over to college man. So it's it's real cool. I, I really enjoy it. 
Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, we first gotta tell y'all how we how we met th- this brother and how you know he you know we we very he part of the fam now he part of the fam. But we always talk about the JRLA. Shout out to, to Jalen Rose Leadership Academy, and we play in that celebrity golf tournament um, every summer. We celebrity, y'all know that we celebrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> I tell them they're my boys. <laughs> so, but uh, this year, uh, Tariq came on and uh, played with us. Uh, so this, but this was our first chance to get to meet him. But like, literally, it was like he was one of the crew. And then once we found out he was a basketball coach, we well, we already knew he was as bad as golf as we were. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Heard about that. Uh, but once we found out he was a basketball coach, then I just made it, you know, a, as they say, just more better for real. Because, you know, when we talk about our friends, I was explaining this to somebody the other day. Um, that the thing that binds us, like, you know, when we talk about the, the seven of us that, you know, grew up together and, you know, it was all in my wedding. we well, all been in each other's weddings. The common bond, even though we all took different paths in life as adults, when you talk with us, what we're doing now and what we've done, the one common bond that we always had with one another was basketball. You, if you went to, from the time we grew up, if if our mothers were looking for us, they knew we was either over one of each other's houses or we were somewhere playing basketball. They always knew that that was what we were doing. So the fact that you were a basketball coach and loved basketball as much as we do. Um, that was just, you know, all the more. Oh, uh, sucky. I'm stuck. No, yeah, yeah, he was stuck. already cool as hell anyway. But the yeah. fact that you love basketball as much as we do, that's it more. Right. So so I, I had to, you know, let everybody know that this, this is our boy. This is just instant homie. You know, so, man, we appreciate you coming on. And uh, so in, in, in kind of talking about what I was just getting to, you know, how you tell us a little bit about your basketball journey. Like, how did you end up? you know, being a, a women's basketball coach, what, what took you to, you know, where you are now? How'd you start with basketball? Oh, yeah. Start yeah. With but before I tell you that, I, I'm, I'm, I got to go back because we said we go to this celebrity tur- uh, golf tournament. And like you said, those are boys now, right? I only right. did one time. Those are boys, <laughs> except Charles Oakley. We all scared to go over there and talk to Charles Oakley. I, don't, I, <laughs> I ain't mess with that dude. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, that dude was, hey, he looked like he was going to hurt somebody. Right, right. I heard too many stories about Charles Oakley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So everybody else, our boys, him, we just, we just watch him do his thing. We don't mess with right. him. <laughs> From a distance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They go, Charles. Oh, yeah. Right. right. <laughs> but yeah, so my man, my journey, man, it, it really started, man. I uh, So I was Air Force, right? Prior Air Force. And uh, it, it got me stationed out here. And I actually deployed, man. I was gone. And uh, my wife put my daughters, they were, shoot, I don't know, uh, fourth, fifth grade. They, they started playing basketball while I was gone. So I, and I would call home and my wife would tell me, man, the girls can play. Like, they, they really out there playing. And I'm like, huh, okay. I'm glad they're taking a liking to it because that's all I did, right? Mm-hmm. Um, my son was still too young. But, man, I got back and I got to see them. They got on this club team. And I got to go to a few practices. And like any dad at for AAU basketball that you should not be doing, uh-huh. I'm yelling from the sideline, hey, do this, do that, do that. Coach from the sideline. I look, been to one practice and I'm telling them what to do. <laughs> but uh, but the coaches heard me there, man, and uh it was it was just kind of cool. They came up and asked me. They were like, Hey, we hear you, you know, uh talking to your girls and you know, you sound like you know what you're doing. So would you like to come coach with us? I'm like, Yeah, you know, that'd be cool. So I started with them, man. Again, you're talking fourth, fifth grade. Um, and we started with this team. And I did that probably about a about a year and a half. And the high school job, the 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 C team, so the freshman team job came open at the high school for the girls. And I, I, I asked all of the coaches I was with, I was like, man, I really wouldn't mind applying for that job. And they were like, man, you should do it. So I just happened to do it. And that's we're talking 2011. And this is before my daughters are going to high school. And I got the job. Um, and I, I coached that team for a year. The next year, I moved up to the JV coach. I did that job for two years. The next year, I was the varsity coach. So for seven years, I was the varsity coach. And, man, my just affinity for basketball, I was nervous about coaching starting out even when they were young because I was like, man, I play so much. How am I going to be as a coach? Am I going to be too hard on them and this and that and the other? Right. And, and I'll tell you what, man, I, I started doing it. Um, coaching 
And it was just one of those things, man. I just had a love for it. I'm like, man, this is, you know, I, I tell people now, I was processing the game at a che- uh, chess level, you know, as a coach instead of a checkers level as a player. As mm-hmm. a player, you just want to go out there and you just want to score and you want to try to play your defense. Well, as a coach now, we're scheming. You know, you're, you're scouting. And as a high school coach, on top of that, especially a varsity coach, man, I had 30 girls under me because I had three teams that I had to be responsible for. And I had my assistant coaches and they were head coaches for the freshman team and the JV team. But it was all about us getting together, you know, doing all those scouting reports, man, coming up with game plans. And I, I, I loved it. So, again, did that for 10 years, coaching girls. And then um, I finished up the last year. That was our best year, uh, me coaching. We made it to the grade eight um, okay. with the team. Um, we were undefeated. We had won our conference the first time in 10 years. We had won the conference, man. So, it, I mean, we were really successful. Um, and then I was at the, uh, so I was the president for the coaches association on the, for the women, for the state. And so we would host these, uh, clinics and we'd have college coaches come in and do a panel and we can ask them questions. Well, I facilitated that and man, the coach from Colorado college, he was just starting out there. He's actually an alum of Colorado college. He came from a D one program, um, out at Cal state Bakersfield. So he took that job and he happened to be there. And after the the, uh, the clinic, he came up to me. He was like, hey, man, uh, we need to talk. I need somebody like you on my staff. And I was like, man, I said, coach, this is too easy. I'm like, I live right up the road. Like, I would love to be able to coach at the college level. So um, we had that brief conversation. Uh, probably a week later, I called him up. I was like, coach, hey, I don't know. I'm still serious about this opportunity. And he said, I am too. So I met with him, had a breakfast with him and the other assistant that he had just hired. And uh, man, it's, it's been, it's been great, man. Um, We started out our first year, we had seven wins. The next year we had uh, 12 wins. This year we ended up with 16 wins and ended up in the conference championship game. Mm -hmm. Like, so you can see the immediate impact that, that, the, our staff has had on these guys, man. It's it's been great, man. Recruiting, I love all that, I, I, all aspects of it. I love it. The player development, the recruiting, you know, just having meetings with the players, the camaraderie that we have with with our group, man. It, it's been really cool, man. It's been really cool. That's 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 dope. Um, so when I, when I think about, like you said, you know, y'all uh, D three. Mm-hmm. So when you when you talk about recruiting. Mm-hmm. And, and by the way, I, I we I missed the the conference final game, but I saw that conference semifinal game. Yeah, that yeah. was a great. That was a great game. Uh, I thought y'all was gonna run away with it though. Uh, yeah, that was, that was, that was it, then it then it turned into a dog fight. Uh, yeah. But it, but it but it was a good it was a good game. They, the guard was y'all's guard was giving the other cat the blues. The whole <laughs> the whole he was giving him the blues, the business, the yeah. whole game. But but it, it's interesting, you know, at being at the the D three level, right? Because uh, one of the things that me and Rod and them always talk about as much as we played basketball and, you know, that kind of stuff growing up, you know, we always watched what was on television. So we only saw the big schools. You know, we never really knew anything about the D3 schools and that kind of thing that, you know, again, I'm, I'm never saying I was an NBA player, but I played with some cats that played D1 ball. Mm-hmm. And, I know I can play, and I know I can play. Yeah. And, and they would pick me up. Right. Even though I was the little dude, they would still pick me up. So my, I say that to say, when you at the D three level, what kinds of players are are you kind of are you are you kind of looking for when you when you go scouting or whatever? Because essentially, you know, you're probably not going to get you know the 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 big big time recruit or whatever. So when you're right. going out and looking, what what exactly are you, are you looking for? Well, it's funny. So. Our motto is, and this, this is what the head coach told us. By the way, head coach is uh, Jeff Conero. Uh, man, really great dude, right? Um, he taught me a lot. Like, I felt like I knew a lot about basketball. I mean, I'm older than him, but he's been coaching basketball for 20 years already. And then he was at the Division One level, right? Right. So our players, I say it all the time, our players would never know that the way they're treated and the things they get to do, It's like a D1 program. We run our program like a D1 program. They won't know. They won't know the difference. If they went to a D1 program, Mm -hmm. they'd be like, man, this is no different than what we've been doing, right? So when it comes to recruiting, coach always tells us, man, we need to recruit above our means. Man, we need to, uh, 
you know, like when you find your wife and you feel you 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 like, man, you you. you you, you got one outside of your realm, like, I wasn't supposed to have this woman, but I got her, and I'm holding on. We do that with our players, man. We go for guys that we're probably not supposed to have. But I'm going to tell you, the portal has shifted the landscape of basketball so much that you look at a lot of rosters, like Division One rosters, they might not have a lot of freshmen because they're going to go – through the portal, get guys that have already played at the college level, whether it's JUCO or if they're coming from a Division II, Division three, some of them can move up, right? So some of these guys get pushed down to where, like, man, they're still looking for a landing spot. There's so many guys that want to play basketball, right? So we don't just recruit in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Man, we got guys from all over. One of our guys, um, Denari, he's from Baltimore. We got guys from California, uh, a couple guys from California. I mean, we got guys from all over. So we don't stick in our one little area. We're hitting all these big time shoe circuits and we're going mm-hmm. to go find dudes. Now, the difference with us is we're a high academic school. So mm. when I say high academic, like it's like Ivy League. Like we we only uh, accept of all applicants um, total that apply to school. We only accept about uh, 11%. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's, it's really, really competitive. So now we can use basketball as a tool to help facilitate people getting into school, right? right? So we go find we 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 not only got guys that can play, man, we got to go find smart guys because there's plenty of kids walking around with a four point point oh that cannot get into Colorado College. They need some help, right? right. So yeah, we try to recruit outside our means. We're going for uh, if you look at our roster, you know we got uh, one of our guys who well he just graduated, but we had two six nine kids. Six eight kid, uh, six seven. Like we go get, we want long athletic guys, right? Got to be able to play defense. Got to have yeah. a high basketball IQ. So if you you see us play, um, we get up and down the floor. We run. We got shooters. And the thing is, you know, it's changed so much. You got so many people that reach out to the coaches. Man, I get emails all day, every day. People interested in playing. Interested in playing. You watch film. You try to go see kids. What coaches need to understand. It's not always oh, just D3, so anybody can go. No, we're trying to win. We talk about championship culture at our school all the time. From our athletic director all the way down, it's pushed all the way down to the coaches. It's mm-hmm. it's saturated within the athletics. So we got to go get people that can fit that mold, man. So we go after some dudes. We, we're not shy about talking to people that, you know, like I said, might turn their nose up at us, but what they realize is as a freshman, yeah, man, it's hard to get into some of these schools. And because Colorado College is so prestigious, a lot of people don't know it. But again, you get a degree from Colorado College, uh, some some doors open up for you. The network in there is unbelievable. So we sell our, our, our not just basketball, man, we sell a 40-year plan. It's not about four years of basketball. It's about after you're done, and now we all are done at some point, can't play no more. What are you going to be able to do? Man, we got some guys out here. Our graduating class after my after our first year those guys graduated the average salary i believe coming out was 85 grand okay this is average salary of just kids just graduating with a four-year degree not a master's 85 grand so it, it, it's 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 something to sell that's that's definitely a, a, a proposition that we make to people like hey you come here like a kid from baltimore he never heard of Colorado College. He's from inner city Baltimore. We got him out here. Man, he likes it. He's going to be a junior this year. And he understands when I'm done here, I can turn around and take care of my family. So, so yeah, we go out, we go out and get some dudes, man. Back to your original question. We looking for dudes that could they can hoop, but they gotta be smart. They they definitely gotta be smart. So you got smart dudes that can hoop. Yeah. Um <laughs> uh I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure I still got a little bit of eligibility left. Um, I, I think I might shut up, B. I think I might be a little. <laughs> um, anyway, Colorado Springs is what about an hour? You said from Denver? About yeah, about forty five minutes to an hour. About forty five minutes from Denver. Yeah. So, um, I mean, you have uh, you know, a beautiful. Well, the Denver airport sucks, but you have a, a beautiful uh, atmosphere there in Denver. So. Um, 
when you go into how how hard is it to convince those those kids uh, to actually come out to Colorado Springs to look at the campus and to hear you out um, and you know get commitments from them? How hard how hard do you think it's been since you've been there? Um, not really hard, man, because I'm telling you, if you if anybody goes on our website and they look at our campus, man, our campus is beautiful. It's right up against the mountain, right? Um, matter of fact, really, the highway separates the school from the mountain. Basically, you at the base of the mountain. Um, and Pikes Peak is sitting there. We have we actually have a video that we did with a drone and everything. So that, and that's part of our our pitch. So we can send to people so they can see going through our facilities and all that. Now, the other thing about our school itself is um, I think we're maybe one of six schools that we actually have uh, multiple divisions, meaning most of our sports are division three. But we have Division One hockey, and because of Title Nine, you have a Division One men's sport. You have to have a Division One female sport, right? Mm -hmm. So we have uh, women's soccer is Division One. So those resources that we have from um, those Division One sports, it trickles down, right, to all of okay. our D three sports. So our facilities, man, are they're they're better than uh, a lot of the mid major Division One programs. Like, so that drone footage, man, everything is a sell, man. You see the, the campus. It's right, uh, we're about a mile and a half from downtown Colorado Springs, which is a small town, but it, it's, it's, it's really nice. Olympic City, that's what we are, mm -hmm. right? The Olympic Training Center is right up the street. So all the, mm -hmm. you see some athletes out, out and about. We have, a, we have a really good relationship with USA Basketball. Um, they actually come use our gym at times. Um, and because we had that partnership, um, six of our guys and our coach were able to travel to Chile to play in the three on three um, basketball tournament. So it's pretty cool. Now you got, you have all that, those different resources, right? All right. Um, and so, so it's, it's not too hard to sell. Once you get to campus and you see it, even all our teams in our league, man, when they come up here and play, cause our league is primarily Texas teams. We're the only team here in Colorado division three. Um, we fly everywhere. So division three teams, division two teams don't really fly. They get on their bus and go. Mm -hmm. we, we have to fly everywhere because we're going to Texas, right? Um, but when those guys come up here, man, you should see them. It's like they're on tour. They're, they're taking pictures. You know, they love it. They love coming to our campus. So it's not, it's not, it's not a hard sell, man, when you see the campus in the facility. Well, so you, I, I got to say, I got to, I got to see the campus. Uh, I'm not going to let you get to your question, Rod. I, I got to see the campus. And, it, it, and it's interesting. And I'll just make one last comment off of what you said. Uh, you know, when you talk about the idea of the plan, you know, OK, well, at some point we're all gonna, not going to be able to play basketball. What is the plan after this? And, uh, you know, as you know, I'm a, a professor. Right. You yeah. know, uh, trying to finish up this Ph.D. God, I hope I finish this up. <laughs> uh, but, um, no, um, just just to hear that is great. But I, I, I have a thing about campuses, um, mm -hmm. you know, what campuses look like. And so listening to you talk about this campus. Uh, I can't I can't wait to come 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 check it out. Uh, and seriously, uh, even though I'm just going to make sure it's in the summer because I ain't, I don't like the cold. Uh <laughs> hey, man, it's not that bad. Hey, that's that's the misnomer, man. It's that's not that off. bad. I, it, I was about to tell you that I'm, I'm going to tell you. So one of the, in our recruiting pitch, uh, we show a slide showing everything. We get the second most sun here in Colorado and it's intense. So I was telling my friend he lives out in North Carolina. I was I, I FaceTimed him. We just had snow uh, last week. It, it dumped on us. And I told him, I said, now I'm going to call you back in two days and I'm going to show you. And in two days, the sun, once the sun came out, the streets were dry. There was still snow like on the grass area, but it was so it was already warm. And then that sun is where I'm where I'm at, where I'm sitting. I'm seven thousand plus uh, as far as altitude. Seven thousand. Wow. Feet. That sun is intense. So I'm, when I tell you if like right now it might be 50 something degrees outside i had this hoodie on and it was just because i was sitting in the garage right mm -hmm. then there's people walking around in shorts because if it gets to 40 50 degrees that sun is so intense because you're so high up yeah uh, uh, this is it's a misnomer the streets are like so i got i got my corvette i pulled it out today i went driving in the corvette today because wow. there's snow on the grass but the, the streets are clean they're dry man it's this place is uh it's lovely. It's lovely. Yeah, I, I got, cold. How long have you been out there? Um, let me see. I got here. Ooh, I got here in 2005. So I, we're coming up on 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. 
Yeah, I, I definitely got to come visit. Sorry, I didn't mean to hijack you. No, know, man, come on I, through. Come on I, through. You I mean to hijack your question, Rod. It's just that 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 you, you know I forgot by now, bro. So <laughs> I need you to come during basketball. We gonna move to the next question. All right, oh, no. so for sure, for sure. Oh, definitely yeah. for sure. Here, here's the question. Um, uh, how was it coaching during the tournament? Because we know we we never I mean, we played in like you know some some basic tournaments you know, um, but how is it coaching in an actual NCAA tournament tournament atmosphere? What is that like? So I'm gonna tell you, man. It's uh, so last year we made it. That was our first time, and I, I can't remember how many years. Um, and we lost the first round, right? Mm -hmm. But you're talking about the focus, how we ramp up the focus, and then you got to win. So this is our conference tournament now. You got to win three games in three days, just like you see on TV. Them, them jokers are playing back to back, and you're typically during the season, like we would have a at least a day in between, you know, mm -hmm. kind of rest, scout, and all that stuff. Well, now you, it's it's so ramped up because you got to win three games. So you play in one game, and while you happy that you won, it only lasts for that long because you now we're back in the film room that that night, and it could be nine o'clock at night. Hey man, we got to watch this scout. We got to eat some more. Um, we got to be ready for now the next day. So as coaches, um, we don't get a lot of sleep. Mm. It's great traveling and being on the road, man. It's a production though, because we got to take care of those dudes, man. Those guys eat so much. I can't process the food fast <laughs> enough. They eat, and again, I'm like, oh man, I, all right, yeah, just get me something. But I, <laughs> but uh, but but yeah, man. I, so we get to our rooms, man, and it's okay. We now got to get the film for the next opponent. We got to break that down. We got to clip it. We got to have a whole scouting report. And it's not just going there and say, hey, guys, this is what we're doing. We have to put in the work, tell you all the guys' tendencies, um, where they like to shoot from, um, what sets they like to run, what defense they like to run, how we going to beat it. And this is all on the assistant coaches, right? Mm -hmm. Our head coach, man, he trusts us so much that we do all the scouting reports. Um, and it's kind of cool because – it does give us that ownership of it. it. It's preparing us for now. If we want to take that next step and be a head coach, you know, you know how to prepare for your games or you know how to teach your assistants how to prepare for games. Um, and so we'll have a session at night. We'll wake up. We'll eat. We'll have another session in the morning because we got to refresh your your brains on all this stuff that we told you. It's a lot of information coming out. Of it. But it ramps up. And then the best thing about this year was that championship game. Uh, we happen to be playing the host school. So our tournament, it jumps from school to school every year. So we'll get to host it, uh, I think, 2027. But this year, we played Centenary, and it was on their home floor with their home crowd. Man, that gym was so loud. I love those type of atmospheres. Now, players get a little nervous. They get a little tense. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, man, y'all got to relish this, man. You, 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 to have this atmosphere, all these people – they they either with you or against you, and they were against us. Man, go out there and shut them up, you know. And right. man, it, it's 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 just a great great atmosphere. So it is. It's it's tense, uh, but man, it's it's so much fun. It's so much fun, and then it's so tense that you want to get back there again. You know, it's that, it's that you get that nervous yeah. feeling, but you want you want that feeling again. Right. So it's like you lose, it hurts. And I told the guys, I say, man, y'all know the work that we put in to get here. Let's just do it again. Period. We got to talk about too much. Let's just go put that work in again, and we'll get back here. How many returning players do you have for next year? Oh man! So, out of a roster, we had we had a total of eighteen on the roster, and of course, only when we traveled, we only traveled with thirteen. Okay. Um, but out of those eighteen, we're only losing two. Oh wow! Ooh. Only losing two. Oh yeah, it's we. They got problems next year. I'm I'm, I'm calling it. They got problems next year. <laughs> right, so since you brought that up, talk to us about um, what kind of contact you can have with them during the off season. I know you know they they have like restrictions as to the time you can you can put in with them. Talk yeah. to us about that. Yeah, that's the tough part about Division Three, man. The season's over, man. We have exit interviews. Um, you know, we keep we keep in contact with our guys. You can talk to them. Our uh, strength and conditioning coach, as they go like now spring break or when it's summertime, they get uh, a workout plan that they have to be able to uh, do on their own. They understand they have to come back in, in shape, um, conditioned and all that good stuff. We cannot touch those players. Even when they come back to campus in the fall, we have no contact with those players. Right now, what happened is uh, last year they, they uh, 
basically our first official date is October 15th. Okay. Well, what they did is said, hey, Division Three, you can have eight days prior to October 15th, and you can use those how you want it. You can use them on the front end before October 15th, or you can use it on the back end. So as we were done with our season, if we want to get them in the spring just to get them for a few workouts and get them in the gym, we could. We chose to use ours on the on the, the front end because uh, okay. we had some freshman point guards that came in. We know they were going to need to play, and we needed to use that time to kind of get them up to speed because they were going to be hey, – they got the keys to the car. They got to be able to know what's going on, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, it's a it's a struggle, man, because Division One, hey, them jokers, spring break, oh, they in the gym. You know, if they're not in the tournament, eh, they they come into the gym, right? They're starting their workouts, um, and then they can get them in the summertime as well. So, but Division Three, yeah, more restriction, um, because if you look at the like the, uh, I don't know, it's not the bylaws, what the the model basically of a Division Three is it's about the academic experience, mm-hmm. and oh by the way, here's this athletic side. There's a sport that going on with that. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. So how do y'all hand, you were talking earlier about uh, the, the transfer portal, right? Uh-huh. How, how exactly does that, how exactly does that work? We kind of, we, we've talked about it and, you know, we've read stuff about it, but coming from a coach's perspective, right? Mm-hmm. How, how does that, how does that transport transfer portal work? And how, how does it, how does it end up impacting you at, at the, at the, at the D3 level? Yeah. So man, it, it's uh, it's it's funny because at the you know at this time of the year, like the portal has opened up, so now coaches can go in there and start to talk to uh, players, right? Um, and is I can't remember what the number was. I just saw it. it; it hit my my Twitter feed. It was I don't know some ridiculous number. It's the highest number it's ever been as far as uh, players trying to transfer. And again, it's a trickle down effect. So you have all these D one players that want to move around, whether they go back to Division one or they drop down. Some of them may drop down just to division two. So you got some of those guys that, you know, went to division one, they're not getting the playing time that they thought they were going to get mm-hmm. um, this division two school is probably a better fit for them. Hey, and this division two coach is saying, Hey, this can help us, you know, win a conference or get to a national championship. Well, what it does is now that division two, they say, well, shoot, I'm not going to bring these freshmen in. Cause now I know I can go get these high powered players out of the portal. Right. So now mm-hmm. the freshmen don't have those places to go. So now they're looking for places to go. Um, and again, on Division Three rosters, you're going to see more freshman talent. The thing is, you're going to see higher level players as freshmen that should have been gone Division One, Division Two. You're just going to see them because they've kind of got bumped. Um, so basically, what happens is, man, you you know, you start to see people declare that they they're entering the portal, or you know, they they got all these different sites that tell you they'll, they'll, they'll start leaking information oh heard this player from such and such is jumping in the portal well then it's like okay how can they fit our need one two let's get them on the phone you know let's start making some contact with them let's see how interested they are in, in coming to a division three school um and being part of what we got going so um it does it, it it's one of those things where it it helps out in terms of being able to get higher caliber players that again when we say we're trying to recruit outside of our means, they may be outside of our means. You know, they may have been top athletes, but hey, they just can't go. Colleges want these to be big time colleges. They want um, players that can come in and impact right away. So uh, some of these guys, man, even guys that we can't get, they're going to they're gonna go to a junior college because they know they, they can go for one year, get the experience, and those coaches are coming in. The Division One coaches are telling players, hey, man, we really like you, freshman tell you what go ahead and go to school we'll come get you out of portal in a year they're telling them that they're using it like like oh, wow. baseball. it's like <laughs> baseball like the farm system right like That's the minor leagues yeah it. yeah yeah they know they can go get kids out of the portal and the other other part of that is now the uh the the, the prep prep schools they go into oh, these okay. preparatory academies and having the fifth year of high school fifth sort of thing, yeah but again it's trying to get you college ready right Right. We're gonna get you in there. We're gonna we're gonna get you lifting weights. We're gonna get you a little bit bigger. Oh, by the way, there's some new terminology you're gonna learn because now you're learning that college talk, right? Um, and we're gonna teach you the game at a college level, and then I'm 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 impactful. I'm ready to go. So when you bring me into your 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 school, and I still have four years of eligibility, I'm ready to go. I got three years of eligibility. I'm ready to go. And again, 
big time D1, it's win now, right? So, mm-hmm. man, they could find somebody that got a year of eligibility. Man, come on in. If you're going to help us win the championship, come on in. <laughs> so you see how it, it just pushes the pressure on everyone else trying to come in, trying to join the system. And those, that's the freshman. That's the hard part for the freshman, right? Um, you're, you're 17, graduating from high school, and there's a guy out here, he's 24, 25. You're trying to go up against him. Mm-hmm. At, he, it's a teenager trying to go up against a grown man at that point. And it's tough for them. Right. So um, we, we get guys in and, you know, we know it's a possibility that man, if they play really well, man, they may transfer. They may leave us. We haven't had any leave us yet because again, that 40 year plan is a lot better. Once you really start to understand and you start to use your brain a little bit, it's better than that four year plan. Yeah. Yeah. I can go division one and yeah, you can go play. Or you can go up there and sit the bench, right? Mm-hmm. right? Or you can go up there, they give you a piece of a scholarship. Um, you may not get a full ride. Now you're paying more out of pocket. Or you stay here and ride this thing out. And and, and it'll it'll pay dividends on the other side. It's the return on the investment, right? So that's what we're preaching to them. Yeah, 40 is always better than four. Okay. Well, here's, the, here's the question. Um. You know, every every uh, player in high school that plays basketball thinks that their next step is go spend two years in college and uh, at most. And then I'm going to be in the pros. How do you um, when you're presenting your program to these recruits, how do you get the how do you sell them on that 40 year plan? Letting them know that, yes, you may be good enough to go to the league, but there's more to it. (laughs) There's more things you need to prepare yourself for. So how do you get that across to these different recruits? Well, and that's the thing. So we we're, we're very transparent with with our the guys that are coming. Man, we're not like I said. I said it's a sell, but we're we're selling you on facts. We're not we're not used car salesmen trying mm, to right. sell you something that a dream. Now, so we've had we've had kids say, "Man, I want to go to the league." Okay, in our recruiting meeting, we're not going to promise to get you to the league. What we're going to promise you is an elite education. Period. And we're going to hit that mark every time because as soon as you get admitted to this school, that, that's when that clock starts, that elite education starts. Um, now, if you're that guy and you are that good, there are avenues to get you there. Like I said, Coach has been around this, man, this this basketball world for a long time. Right. Um, I've seen it with my own eyes. Go to the Final Four with him um, to see him network and work the room, talking to people. And I'm like, man, he knows everybody. Here mm-hmm. I am just just – riding the coattails, walking around like, hey, how you doing? I'm such a, <laughs> but he knows everybody. So he is connected in the sense of he has Division One contacts that he can help people to say, hey, you did great at this level. Now I'm going to send you to this school and then that might propel your dream. Like he's coached guys that are, that are playing professionally overseas. He knows guys, like he's introduced us. Uh, matter of fact, last year uh, Final Four, we went to the slam dunk three-point contest the dude that won the slam dunk contest was one of his players right uh the dude is playing overseas like he he has those connections so we can make those things happen um but you one you got to be that guy right um and then you're probably going to move on from us and it's not a problem because we're not going to stand in the way of your dreams but if we can look at you and evaluate you and watch you playing and we know that okay hey that that MBA is probably a little far off. We're going to promise you this elite education, right? We're going to develop you the best we can at our level with our guys. And man, if if you're better than what we have here, by all means, again, jump into the portal and let's see if we can make something happen for you. If not, hey, stick this out because in four years, man, things are going to take off for you. They're going to take off. We got guys that are playing with us. They get they get these internships, man, while while they're playing, while they're still in school. Then they get job offers while they're in school still. They haven't even finished. Our, our seniors, one of our seniors, he's already working for an investment firm. He hasn't graduated yet, but they know what's coming out of Colorado College. They know when, when he's done, this dude is going to be an earner. So we're going to hire him. So we, we're, we're not going to sell you the MBA, man. We're going to sell you an elite education, period, point blank. Um, and we, we talked to all our players when we were recruiting um especially where you know we our our team if you look at colorado college it's not very diverse okay 
But if you look at our basketball team, specifically men's basketball, you'll see how diverse it is. And that was intentional. Coach Conroe was very intentional about finding men of color. We're going to use basketball to leverage a great education so you can then get a great job. Again, it's all about that 40 year plan, man, where, yeah, we want to win because this job, our job is predicated on wins and losses, right? But man, we're not selling them that. We're saying, man, you're smart. You can hoop, but guess what? We can take care of you here. We can get you an elite education and make sure when you're done here, you can go on to be somebody uh, um, that's very productive in the world, man. We got some dudes, man. Uh, the uh, uh, screenwriter for Sneakerheads um, and Uncle Drew. All right. Okay. Yeah, he went to Colorado College. Matter of fact, he was he. I think he played with Coach Conroe, but he knows him. So we all got to meet him. Like it, I'm telling you, there's you know the mayhem dude on on the commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Said, Colorado College. Oh, get out of here, <laughs> dude! Man, it's, it's it's so amazing. So we tell a uh, there's a story that he tells all the guys about. Uh, Ryan Haygood, he is he came to Colorado College from Denver, went to school in Denver High School at Emmanuel. Came to Colorado College because his girlfriend went to school there, right? He came to that's when they had a football team, played football. He really just came to play football and be with his girlfriend. He leveraged his education, ended up going to uh, CU Boulder for law school. He's a civil rights attorney. He is uh, an, he was an advisor to Obama, and now he's an uh, advisor to Biden. Like this dude's life took off Colorado College. So that's, that's <clears throat> so, ladies and gentlemen, not only does Colorado College have basketball, but they also have football. No, not anymore. Not anymore. What? Got rid of football. You let me yeah, say yeah. that you don't have football no more. Football too expensive, man. They had to get. That's because you weren't listening. He said yeah, yeah. had. He said had, you used to have full had had. Hey, I'm playing hurt right now, man. So I don't hear a whole lot of that, stuff. Get that wool out your ears from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not hearing a whole lot of stuff. It's cold, Apparently, man. obviously, you're not. You're right. Obviously, you're not. Has got heat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> look, you can't even get it out. <laughs> I'm hey, I'm a trooper though. I'm a trooper. I'm playing hurt. Boy, that's, that's why hey, Colorado College need to give me that scholarship so I can play ball. Cause I'm yeah, a trooper. You, hey, the air is clean down here, so you up in that that, that Detroit air. You you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you get Rodney up there in that high elevation, it he'll take a walk around the block and you'll find him laid out on the corner. Hey, <laughs> brother. Oh. Oh. This serious business <laughs> on our wall. Oh. On our wall, matter of fact, I'm gonna send y'all the video of our facility so y'all can see it. But on the wall in the gym, it says, Welcome to 6035 feet. Breathe deeply. <laughs> when we play teams, they all know it. When we play teams. They come out there, they do their warm up. We be watching them like, oh man, they they've been warming up for thirty minutes hard. They are not gonna make it. Second half, <laughs> second half, brother, hey, Nothing their hands pulling them shorts, man. Nothing they like, coach, they tap out. They be tapping out every time. <laughs> yeah, so you want you want sixteen games? How many how many games do you play in a season? Um, so far, uh, at twenty five. That's going into the tournament. So about 25. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. And man, we were one away from going to that dance, man. You make it to the dance, anything can happen. Right. It's it's one, anything. it's one game. Yeah. It's one game. It's, it's, and, and that's the thing. And and actually, that's a that's a good transition because I think we me and Rodney both ran out of questions. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but no, nah, that that was great. That, that was dope. It, re it really was. I'm uh it's, it's I tell you, it's it's one of the things that now you know, since we've been doing this. Um, we kind of st started paying attention to a lot of other things. You know, I, I tried to, I've been keeping up with it. Not as much. I tried to start watching hockey. Like, uh -huh. So the fact that you mentioned that, you know, Colorado college, you know, division one in hockey, so on and so yeah. forth. I've been trying to keep up with it, especially after uh, my wife, we went to the, the hockey hall of fame and I found okay. out about all the black founders of hockey. Uh, oh, you know, wow. particularly uh, one of the guys I teach about when I, when I teach about uh, Pan-Africanism, um, one of the founders of black nationalism is a guy by the name of George Padmore. Uh, he mm -hmm. was from the Caribbean, but he ended up in uh, in Canada and was one of the founders of the Black Hockey League or whatever. Wow. Up there. So, you know, I've so it, so my point is, is that it's really going to start making me pay, uh, pay attention, on, especially now that you sent the link and I we can I can watch the games uh, mm -hmm. to pay attention to those, you know, other divisions. You know, prior to this, I hadn't really 
kind of paid attention to him until maybe the tournament. Yeah. But, you know, always, you know, kind of getting a chance to watch regular season games and getting a chance to see other things and other qualities of basketball is something that, you know, I'd, I'd really like to take advantage of. So now that, that, was, that was dope. But uh, let, let's start speaking of the dance. Let's talk about the dance. Yeah. Oh, let me grab it real quick. You grabbing what? Something to drink. Oh, <laughs> all right. So uh, this is like one of our uh, favorite times of year yeah. because our, all of our listeners, they know that we like to uh, do a lot of prognostication, right? Oh, we yeah. Like to be wrong. <laughs> but we always wrong. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm pulling we up always my wrong. wrong. I'm pulling up my wrong bracket right now. <laughs> we always wrong. <laughs> but um, the the NCAA um, men's tournament is like one of the best sporting events. And it's an event. You know, it's a long event, which kind of makes it cool. And we got Pookie Dudes in the house. Dude. What's up? What's up? What's up? Tariq, what's going on? How you doing, man? D double O V E. Williams <laughs> here from what? Florence, Missouri? Yeah, that's where I am. But I'm Florence, from Boogie. Missouri, man. I was about to say Ferguson, <laughs> but now you ain't from Ferguson. You from Florence. Uh, hey, I, I, hey, I see that Boston jersey back there. I'm gonna just let that one ride, man. Uh, yeah, just let that one ride. Let that man. He was a huge. Celtic Celtic fan. No, no. Yeah, let let that permeate. Is, Tariq, the funny thing is, is that he is not only the biggest Celtics fan I know, he's also the biggest Lakers fan I know. Uh huh. Uh huh. Hey, okay. Yeah. Now, that, okay. That, it, it is the strangest combination <laughs> growing up because who was always in the finals? Boston right, and right. L.A. Yeah, it didn't, be didn't, it, didn't, it didn't matter who won, dudes was gonna be happy. Right. Yeah, I got I got this internal conflict thing going on. Yeah, hey, he got an east team and he got a west team. He, he good. Oh yeah. He, he was I a, my, look, I got my bird and magic picture. I back. see he I was see. a bird and magic fan. <laughs> oh, wow. Always right. has been. Always has been. Um, all right, dudes. We was about to talk, we was about to talk about this uh this tournament. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Before we get to the NBA. You got, the, you got your broke bracket. Uh, actually, I don't have my bracket done. I'm a uh, behind schedule, uh, but I, I was probably either. yeah. I was I was probably gonna be uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably gonna win it though. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> just right. just because of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just all you gotta do is let the computer pick, and then yeah, you'll win. Man, you don't know how many times I changed my I I changed this damn bracket probably ten times already, man. It's, <laughs> oh, oh, it's tough. It's tough. Man, see, I, I watched the conference tournaments. Uh, yeah, that's what I was So, you know, about. I get it because that always lets you know something. But then what always gets me to. When Houston, is, how did they get, locked, get whooped like that? Listen, listening to them prognosticators will mess you up, too, because they say, oh, look at this team. This team is going to be great. And then they lose in the first round after you done picked mm-hmm. them to go all, all the way, way to the elite eight finals. <laughs> 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 you bastards. All the time. I done picked them to go to the finals. They lose in the first round. Right. All right. So we just go. Again, this this is this, this, this the fun part. Uh, we look at we look at the um the East bracket right now, yeah. Right, with UConn, uh, and because Illinois and, and Iowa State is over there also. Uh, in the East bracket, Rick, you are an expert. Do you right. see any 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 first round um uh upsets that we should be looking at? Oh yeah, so. Man, this is going to be this is going to be really really interesting, right? So, I say Drake at 10, they're going to beat Washington State. Oh, okay. Ooh. I got Drake beating him. Um, hold on, I got I, oh, let me see who else I got on this east side. Uh Oh, you know what? I picked Drake also. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they Drake going to win. <laughs> so, that's the only I think that's the only upset I got on the East for that first round. Oh no, no, no! I'm sorry. I got UAB beating San Diego State. The, ooh, see, mm. Mm. see oh, oh, mm. <laughs> them boys, them boys from San Diego State play some ball. Oh, yeah, I mean, and, I, and I'm not, and I'm not just because of what was that last year when they made it last to the year, four or whatever. Yeah, when, last year. Hey, San Diego State play some ball every every year. They 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 play ball now. Yeah. In, in, in my other bracket, I so I always pick one. That's my first mind, and then I got a second bracket <laughs> that's like, okay, these are the ones I was skeptical about, right? Yeah. So in my second bracket, I got I got Drake too beating Washington State. I got I got Duquesne beating BYU. Yeah, that was a tough one. I, 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 I was nervous. <laughs> 
That's a tough one. So, uh, <laughs> Duquesne had a good. They had a good uh, tournament, though. Yeah, I got. I got Duquesne. They didn't. They didn't have a good like conference it. tournament. So I. Uh, but I don't know, uh, man. And you know what? What's also the killer though is it's always mm-hmm. knowing that that it's always that one of them ten or eleven seeds that make it to the Sweet Sixteen, and you just gotta hope you guess right. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know it's gonna be one of them that's yeah. gonna make it. And, it, and it's just, it's so hard to say 11 beats. Nah, but man, I had to go. I, I had to do one of them because like you said, every year. So that's why I took my 10 Drake. Uh, I think everybody is high on Drake right now. I was like, yeah, I'm going with Drake. Oh yeah. And it's always an upset up in yeah. the, around their time. So yeah. Yeah. I, I went with the Drake. I, I, wa- I wasn't so confident in it. And UAB, man. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a, ooh. Yeah, buddy. And there's always a 12-5 upset. Always. So, all right. So, here's the question. Here's the question. Um, how chalk do you have that when it gets towards to, um, the Elite Eight? What'd you say? You said how? How chalk do you have it? Let me see. When we get to the eight? Yeah. Whew. Hey. I got Illinois getting to the eight. Okay. With UConn. <laughs> okay. Now, and I watch Illinois play. I watched them beat my damn Buckeyes. So I was mad about that. I <laughs> it, was, it was a problem I in the been... house, right? But then they, I watched them through the tournament, and they, they, I, I, I like what I saw. But they coming up against UConn, and they not, they, they not the ones to be messed with. They are just not the ones to be messed with. So I'm gonna go with that. Then I got. North Carolina, Arizona, coming out of the West. North Carolina, Arizona. Arizona. What's that? A one, uh, a one, two, one, two, a one, two, a one, two. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> I got, I got Arizona, I got Arizona pulling that one out. I, got, I got, I got one for you. I got one yeah. for you. I got in my in my other bracket, and it's not just because I hate North Carolina. <laughs> I got. I got St. Mary's beating them in the Sweet 16. Oh <laughs> man! So I, I, I and that's funny because I've I've heard of St. Mary's. I heard that, but that, that's that's out here. That's out here. St. Mary's, yeah, that's yeah. It's not too far away, man. St. Mary's I, got a good team. Who did I got? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I don't oh, know. Oh, you in no D? I, I got I got St. Mary's beating you. I don't think Carolina is as good as everybody thinks they are. Like I like I love you know I'm a Duke fan, but uh, I, I got I, I don't think Duke got it this year. Yeah, no, they don't. They don't. But, no, but no. I'm sorry, I don't want to move out the off. bracket that we was talking about. I don't want to move out the bracket we was talking about. We got to stay in stay in the same bracket. We was talking about the West. So now I got yeah. I got St. Mary's beating them. I got St. Mary's playing Arizona, and then Arizona going to the uh, to Ooh. the final. Ooh, that's that's it. Yeah. Uh, ooh. Ooh. All right, so that's that's the West. Let's go south. And I got ooh. Iowa State. I'm sorry, I got Iowa State beating UConn. <clears throat> oh, ooh. You got so, Iowa State in the finals. Yep, I got Iowa State, Ari- I got Iowa State in Arizona. Woo. Okay. Uh, who, who we got in the um in the, in the south? Oh, first yeah. round. First round. Uh. First round um, upsets, and then who you got going to the uh, Elite Eight? First round upset. All right, let's see. Oh, I got the back up. Oh yeah, I got. Oh, I got to do it. <laughs> First round. Wait, wait. We in the South, right? South. Uh huh. I got twelve beating the five. James Madison beating Wisconsin. Ooh. And look, no, now I'm gonna really get you. It's a nice game. Matter of fact, it's about to come on, and it ain't because I'm living here. I think Colorado beat Boise, and Colorado beats Florida. I picked that one already. I just picked it. Mm. Wow. I think Colorado could be. I think Florida could be had. That's that's my upset. What about that NC State Texas Tech game? What you think about that one? Man, I, I I'm. So I told you I changed my bracket ten times. I had, <laughs> I had I had NC State first. I had them. I had them, and I was like, "Tech gonna be ready." NC State won five games in five days. 
Yep. Right, there ain't much more left in that tank. Ooh, I'm sorry. I didn't think about it that way. It, I, I didn't think about it that way. You gonna hit E at some point. Now they got the they got they got a little rest right now, right? But bruh, I don't know, man. I I think they got hot. Right at the right time. At the right time, but now I think, blow that candle out. <laughs> See, right, so I, got, I got I got NC State, um, but you know something. You know who I like. I like Florida, and I like Florida going to the Sweet Sixteen. I got them. I got them beating the winner of Boise, Colorado, and I got them beating Marquette. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. E- even though I, even though I like even though I like Shaka Smart, but I, he, I, he I, I, got Florida, I got Florida beating Marquette. <laughs> Huh, so see, look, since Chaka Smart left VCU, he does not win <laughs> in the tournament, man. He be killing me. But and, uh, so that's my that's what I that was, that's all I really got in the in the South. Although I got I got Wisconsin beating Duke uh in, in the second round. Well, you know what's funny, man? <clears throat> Kentucky, I mean not Kentucky. Shit, it's not I'm sorry. I'm I don't even want to jump ahead. I don't want to jump ahead. I want to talk about this Kansas team when we get to it. Oh yeah, when we get to it, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that one. Well, but so you mentioned Kentucky. What do you think about that Kentucky team? Um, I, you know, Kentucky man, he because they they giving me problems, man. That's the yeah. one that I've been going back and forth with uh, for the last three, four days. Going, man. I I got Kentucky making it to the Elite Eight, but they they're gonna run up against Houston. That's where I feel. Yeah. Uh, see, I I watched. Florida. I got Kentucky in the finals. Do you? Ooh, ooh, yeah. in the final four, man. See, I'm watching no. this thing. In the championship watch- game. Oh, Lord. Hey. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, oh, Rodney. I don't know. That's a bold here's, right the, here's the thing, though. Here's the, and this That's is the bold. reason why. <laughs> this is the reason why. Because they have four bona fide good guards. And guard play wins in a tournament. So and I, I, I'm expecting them guards to, get to, to go ahead and, and propel them. To this, to this victory, but again, game. I keep going back and forth but with them. Man. The you need to go. Now. You need to go back and back. <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't don't go back and forth. Go back and back and back. I got. I got. I got. See, and where my where my trepidation came really is because I got uh, NC State playing Kentucky. I get, got Kentucky beating NC State. Um, and then I got Kentucky playing Florida, and I got Kentucky beating Florida. But the only reason I have Kentucky beating Florida is because the last time I watched Florida play Kentucky, they beat the brakes off Kentucky. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and I said, but I said Kentucky's not gonna let that happen twice. You know, uh, uh, again in in the tournament, especially. And so, but I, I got I got them losing to Houston just because Houston. Houston's every and we all know this playing basketball defense travels yeah and them, them boys yes. they gonna come if they land bricks you gonna lay bricks too because they gonna <laughs> yeah. they gonna play deep so except yeah, that last I'm game except that, that last game they was laying major bricks yeah. and and then and then I, I I saw a flaw in them and that's what made me pause with them I got them to the championship games and I was like nah they not gonna win it you know why. Man, they they got dudes on the floor that are not threats. Uh, they they were sagging off of dudes, man, daring them to shoot, and the brother could not shoot the ball. So I was they, like, they could, oh, they got the two. They got the two. Out here. Houston got some good guards too, though. Yeah, they, have, yeah. they, they got two good guards that they're the ones that make the reason why they win. But man, the same thing. The other fellas, man, they they <laughs> have a problem. Right, they could. Then throw it in the ocean. Right, you out there with two left hands. Throw <laughs> 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 in the ocean, man. And, yeah. that, and that's the that's the reason why I was like, man. In and, and that tough game against Kentucky, man, they they going they gonna lose it. But again, I'm I'm, kind of, I'm nervous about that. I'm I'm still rethinking my Kentucky pick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on down to the last the last region, and that's the uh the West. I'm sorry, the Midwest. The Midwest. Midwest. Yeah, buddy. All so right. this this is where, uh, <laughs> uh, this is where it know. gets a little a, a little uh, a little, <laughs> a little difficult. 
It's, it's some good teams in the Midwest, man. It's, it's so, some good teams in the Midwest. Because Rodney married to a Purdue graduate, and he might not be able to sleep in the bed again. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah he don't go with the number one. Uh, no, nah, yeah, yeah, Purdue, bro. One thing, one thing I can, I Purdue go as a uh, major league. They gonna blow it in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> they better not, man. They better not. They gonna uh, blow it in the playoffs, man. That's what they do every year. I'm gonna take. I'm the, the the hardest, the toughest one, man, is this Kansas team. You done lost your best player, but they got the other dude back. So they got two dudes. They got a big about, dude back. They got a big yeah, dude they back. Had, both of them was averaging about twenty a game, right? So they get the big guy back. So it's hard, but man, everybody's high on McNeese. Everybody high. On, I still chose Kansas. Um, now, so so here's the thing about McNeese. And I was talking to this about the deal about this yesterday. McNeese played. <laughs> Uh, what is it? Uh, champion Christian oh, they played the Mississippi College for women, <laughs> <laughs> and they played the Mississippi College for women. Hey. <laughs> Some team in Texas ain't nobody ever heard of in their life with 150 people on the uh in the student body and 15 wow. of them on playing the basketball so team. Eight, well, now that we know that Ricky don't carry 18, it might be 18 people. So that means right, that, right, right. that one one twelfth of the entire school population is on the basketball team. Right. So I gotta beat I gotta beat Gonzaga. I gotta beat Gonzaga, but they gonna lose against Ken. That there's my other upset. There's another upset. See, I got I got Gonzaga beating Kansas in the in the second Ooh. round. I I don't think I I just I'm I think with uh what is it Cullen or Curran? I can't always forget what which one is. But his injury, his injury to Kansas, because again, I, I watch a, my my nephew play football in Kansas, so yeah, I've, I've kind of I've kind of started following him when Drake was there. That was when Embiid and Wiggins and then was there. He played football, so I kind of really became a, a a big a much bigger fan. I kind of always liked them, you know, growing up or whatever. Um, but at the same time, um, I've been why I watch a lot of them, and they I don't know if they just gonna be the same without him. Even yeah. though they got the other one back, I, his his position is too pivotal, and mm-hmm. and when they play without him, they really don't look good at all. Man, mm-hmm. they don't they don't look good at all. So that's As why evident, I, by, evident by the Big East. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, the Big Twelve champion. Uh, right. The tournament. Uh, yeah. I think I think that they'll be able to get by Samford, despite what I heard somebody say on around the horn today. I think they'll get by. <laughs> Sam, I think they'll get by Samford. But uh, again, just because of you know talent alone, you know size, all that kind of stuff. But I, I don't see them getting past uh, Gonzaga. All right, yeah. uh, the, the what the 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 game I'm I'm concerned about, well, the team I'm concerned about in that that West is Creighton. What you think about Creighton? Ooh, um, I I like. Creighton, of course, in that first round against, but oh, I got him actually beating. I got him playing Oregon. Got Oregon beating South Carolina. Mm. That's another upset. Now, and the only reason why I say that is the way. So Auburn had beat South Carolina, right? Mm-hmm. And here I am, I'm like man, South Carolina ain't gonna let that happen again. Man, Auburn beat the breaks off them dudes. I was like, yo, so I it, it just messed me up. So I was like, nah. I'm gonna go ahead and go Oregon, but I got Creighton beating Oregon and having to play Tennessee in a Sweet uh-huh. Sixteen, and that's what they that's what they stop. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I got so another team out in your area. What about that? You, you you talked about Colorado, but what about Colorado State? Nah, they ain't, they ain't ready. They're not I ready. Think, I don't think they. I watched them play yesterday. I watched that game, man, and. Um, it's kind of typical of Colorado basketball as far as like their style of play. They're not that big, um, so I think once they start to run up against more athletic teams, that's going to be bigger. I think they just they just gonna have a problem, man. I really do. Um, yeah, they they I think Texas gets them. So speaking yeah. of big, we, we mentioned them a minute ago. What do you think about that Purdue, Purdue team? Do you? Do you think they have a chance to actually do something? Yeah, I, I think they pull it together, man. I actually have them uh, going to the – I got them in the Final Four. But I, I, I'm, like you, we talked about, that damn defense travel. I got Houston getting them in the Final Four. Giving them the business? Yeah, I think 
if Houston can hold up that with that defense, um, I think they – I mean, the big dude is going to get his numbers. He's going to get his. But I think if they can crowd him, man, make him have to pass that ball out, like get, get it out the paint, I, I think they can handle it. It, it. It's a tough out. Purdue is tough. That big boy is – oh, man, it's just ridiculous. Uh, so – but I think Houston can do it. If, if nobody else can do it, because they dogs, man. Them boys got some dogs on the floor. So what's what say you D? Who coming out the West? Let me, let me go back to. I got um. Wait a minute, wrong one. Sorry, I flipped to the wrong one. In the West, I've got. Uh, wait a minute, the West or the Midwest? The Midwest. I'm sorry, the Midwest. Okay, I got I got Tennessee coming out of there. Okay. I got I got Tennessee. I got Tennessee in the Elite Eight. I, I just got them. <laughs> um, <laughs> as much as I fuss about Purdue, I'm giving them one more chance. Because Zach <laughs> Eady is just big, man. All right, Biggie. Zach, Zach, Eady, yeah. Zach Eady is just, just big. Um, and there's there's nobody in college basketball <laughs> that can stop him, man. I don't know. I, I think home. Uh, I think homeboy from uh, – from UConn is is more athletic. He just as big, but more athletic, but way more athletic than Eden. Uh, eh, the, seven, okay. the, seven, the seven foot, he like seven seven one, I think, or something from UConn. The center that they got, I can't think of his name, but he, you know, Edie big, but he lumbers around. Uh, dude from UConn runs the floor. He he a big dude that runs the floor. So, but well, they wouldn't play. They wouldn't they play till the they would play to the finals anyway. They would yeah, they would meet to the championship game. Yeah. Oh. So I don't I don't know, man. Purdue just Purdue scares me the same way Illinois scares me. Yeah. You know, I, I, I love man, my I was, line eye, oh. Man, Illinois scares me all the time, man. Underwood be underachieving. Watching <laughs> them play in this in the big the Big Ten tournament, man. You would think Illinois was the best team in college basketball. Yeah. Right. They, they had defense, they had rebounding. Shooting threes, my man scored forty points a game. They will ball. Oh, yeah, I saw that game. That was a good. One. They right. will ball. Now, now let's is, see what happens this first game of the tournament. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Illinois can win the whole thing or lose tomorrow night. First or round. <laughs> either one would be. Either one would be possible with this team, and that's what kills me about them. Yeah, man. That's what kills me about them. But uh, so let's. All right. So recapping. We go all throw it out. Let me let me throw my uh my final four. Your final four. I got I got UConn, North Carolina. Uh, I'm torn between this Kentucky Houston, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I got Kentucky and Purdue. That's my final four. I got uh UConn and, and Kentucky in the uh, championship game. Will UConn win it? What you got, D? I got Iowa State, Arizona. Houston, <sighs> and actually, before I knew Homeboy wasn't playing, it was Kansas. Then when I found out he wasn't playing, then I had to change it uh, to Purdue because I had I had actually Kansas beating Purdue. Okay, and and playing uh, Tennessee. Okay, right. Um, but but now I got now I got to I got to change that that bracket around a bit and I probably have uh, it'll be Purdue against Tennessee and then I got Purdue coming out of there. And I, I, I think I, I'm a, again I'm even go. even though I don't think dude is that athletic I think I'm with you though I don't think there's anybody else, particularly in a one game scenario yeah against Edie that uh, they gonna have to slow the game down really slow the game down and I don't think they want to do that either so so what you do for Purdue is let Edie do whatever Edie's gonna do. And just shut down their guards. If you shut yep. their guards down, man. Yep. Purdue, they don't they don't have a, a third person out there that can score for them. You shut them guards down, it's over. It's over. That's how they that's how they lose. But you know, everybody wanna wanna try to shut Edie down. And that's that, that's just not gonna happen. No, it ain't. That's just not gonna happen. Uh Pookie Dudes, we, we, we know you ain't you didn't do your bracket yet. Yeah, we I didn't do my homework. We ain't, gonna, we ain't gonna put you on the spot. It ain't the first time. It ain't the first time. Yeah, it ain't the first time. <laughs> I ain't I, mean, I, I could copy off somebody's paper like I like right, I normally right. did. 
I think it won't so. be the two losers at the top, though. I promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, let me see. We gonna win. Out, I'll tell you what, man. So here's here's a predicament. I got three number ones making it to the final four. I got. You know four. that ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen, man. It ain't gonna happen. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> but I, I got I got UConn playing Arizona. I got Houston versus Purdue. I got UConn and Houston in the final. And I I'm telling you on on the tenth time I switched it and I got UConn winning the whole thing. So, so ladies and gentlemen, are you happy? We're going to be extremely wrong come tomorrow <laughs> evening. <laughs> oh, As always. Right. Oh, we always are. Uh, the, the choices that we selected. <laughs> so don't blame us. Blame, right. it, on the yeah. blame it on the boogie. Uh, yeah, the, all right. The contest is always to see who the biggest loser is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. We got Pookie Dudes in, in the house. Dude, did you win last year, Dudes? I won. No, it was a three way. No, we all tied. Oh, that's right. It's all right. <laughs> it so Which doesn't say much for the rest of the uh, guys we, uh, that, was in, that was in the uh, contest. All right. I think, I think we had like 400 points. <laughs> oh, Lord. The, the battle of the worst. And we, and we, we won. And we won. All three of us won. <laughs> so, hey, we, we going to take it. We going to take it. Mm-hmm. All right, Pookie Dudes, I need to get your reaction on this right here. All right, oh, here you go. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Oh, okay. man, John, John the Baptist got baptized, blessed, cursed, <laughs> <laughs> and everything else. I mean, it, it, it doesn't get worse than that. that that's one of the uh, greatest posters of all time. I mean, I wish it was a more clean, you know, a cleaner dump. Right. But uh, it was a blessing all the same. He, he, he got <laughs> blessed. And, uh, oh, man, I mean. And it, was, oh, it was just all bad. So here's here's the question, dudes. Um, when we, we're talking NBA basketball here, with Minnesota down both of their big men, what do you think um, their chances of of uh, moving into the playoffs, uh, going far in the playoffs, if they don't get those two back? Um, I think it'll be rough because in the West, you know. Got those big guys in the West, uh, especially with Denver. You know, you got the, the Joker, and then plus uh, Denver's whole uh, front line is, you know, pretty big. And uh, the Lakers even have a big line with Anthony Davis. The Lakers ain't going to make the playoffs. So, well, yeah, they, they, they're not, but they're, they're going to make the play in. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, where are they going? The, yeah, the West, the West, they got big guys over there. So I think that's going to. Uh, so, Minnesota, even though Minnesota is very athletic, you know, with uh, Nas Reed and those other guys, those you know, second tier guys they have, but uh, I don't think they're going to be able to compete against the bigger team. So, I guess a better question would be um, Do you think Ant Man has progressed to the point now where he can try to lead this team through the playoffs? Oh, yeah, I, I saw that. I definitely saw that last year. You know, you can see it growing, and, and now he's, uh, you know, surpassed, you know, most of our expectations. So I, I definitely think he's uh he's ready, man. He's ready to take control. Uh, I think he's uh, supplanted a uh, cat as a team leader as well. So, mm. Mm. so Rick, how much NBA uh, basketball do you get a chance to watch? Oh, I I I, I, I dabble. You know, I watch it. I, I get in there. You know, I'm, I, I like to wait for the playoffs too. But now, getting to that point to where now everybody's trying to make those push that push to, you know, get the their seed themselves. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, man, I think. Ant has definitely uh, lamented his 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 position with that team. Like he's that guy, right? Mm. Um, I don't think he can carry like you were saying, man. You start to play these teams in the West, especially playoff basketball, man. They're just not going to be big enough. They're just they just not going to be big enough. Period. So um, you see, even like the Warriors. I watched the Warriors, man, and 
Yeah, they're older, but if they don't have size, they don't have the size on the floor. So it's tough for them. If they're not hitting, it's too it's it's tough, man. So they don't even shoot as good as the Warriors are gonna shoot. It's gonna be that much more difficult for them. So yeah. Uh that's gonna be rough on them. Do you you are you are uh uh a semi uh Minnesota semi Wolves fan? Right yeah, on. I I, I was yeah, he, there. Yeah, he was down with Prince. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, like I said, I, I still remember when I went when they got the the, uh, the lottery when they won the number one pick. Man, they act like they had the they had won the uh, the NBA title. They was kicking it. I was like, okay, the season ain't even started yet. Uh, but no, I agree. I don't think I think that Ed has has definitely arrived as um, that go to guy. Um, but I'm, I'm with y'all. I totally agree. I don't think that they can win without, without both of them, but I don't think that, I think they both won't be out. I think not for the entire playoffs. I don't think, I think, Gobert, yeah, I think Gobert I be think back. he'll be back. Um, now the thing is, is that if Gobert comes back, the problem then is, is well, where are you going to find that score and that, that Carl Anthony Towns brings you, you know, even though he want to be the best shooting big man. In the best Worst three point ever. Big man in the history of the NBA. Worst label he, ever. He needed to get his big ass down low right. and, uh, and 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 be down there and be a big man. Like we said, with all these big people out in the West, that's where they need you. Um, but I don't think they can win without both of them. And they definitely need, and if I was going to take one, I would say Towns simply because of his score. Okay. So we have like, I think it was like 12 games left in the season, somewhere around there. So in these last twelve games, uh, let me pull up the let me pull up the standings here. Uh, let me go standings. Here we go. In the West, um, you got nope. That's the East. Where's the West? West down here. You got OKC and Denver tied at the top. Okay. So the first question is, do you think um, OKC has enough to to finish at that number one? Dudes, uh, I don't think they're gonna hold Denver off. Denver is going to go ahead and uh, supplant uh, OKC at the top, but I'm impressed with uh, OKC for uh, you know being able to hold on you know as long as they have, and uh, you know I mean I just enjoy their team. They they play so hard. You know you got a young team that play hard. They got you know they got the size, although you know uh, maybe not the you know the, the muscle with the uh, Chet Holmgren. Mm-hmm. You know he's kind of like a slender man, but. Yeah, uh, they're impressed. With they, I mean, they play so hard. You know, if, if you got a young team that plays hard, man, they're always in the game because they have that energy, and that's something you can't, you know, you can't replicate that energy. I, I always go back to they don't know the what they don't know. Gonna, yeah, the experience is going to going to hurt them in the end. But right now, you know, they're, they're, they're doing great. But I mean, I, again, I understand that. I understand that. Um, experienced team should have the advantage over the, the inexperienced team. But like I said, the OKC, the way they play, they really don't care whether or not uh, the team that they're playing is more experienced than they are. They go out there oh, and they they, they yeah, ball. Then they got Shea, too. They got Shea. And they yeah. got Shea. Shea. Shea should be, you know, I know they're going to get an MVP to Joker. I know they're going to do that. Um but Joker, Joker's been doing what Joker's been doing for the last four years. Nothing, nothing different. This year, Shea is by far, uh, when you're looking at most valuable, if that's what you're looking at, the term valuable, he is the most valuable player to his team um, and has them in a position that way they may actually get the number one seed. They have, a, they have a, the, um, the chance to do that. He won't get the MVP, don't get me wrong. <laughs> And they don't, they don't, they'll never vote for him. But uh, the way he's playing and the way that his team feeds off of the way he's playing, man, bro, like I said, they don't know what they don't know. They may go into this thing and say, you know what? <laughs> we should go ahead and just go and win the whole thing. And they can because if you look uh, man to man, if you go down the roster and look at this team, they actually have a very good roster. But the, the their biggest Achilles heel is going to be in that middle because – they don't have the big dude that can push Joker around, or even yeah, yeah. Uh, Car Anthony Towns and uh, Rudy Gobert. They don't. They don't have that. Chad is good, but oh, yeah. Chad he's a good shot through. blocker and everything. But I mean, but he's he gonna get killed in the that, uh, hitting, hitting you with those pounds down low. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's gonna be their Achilles heel with. And, and, I and think, they, um, that's the one thing they should have done at the trading deadline was get that big. <laughs> get a big what? Get a big what? What you? What you? No, I, I gotta stop that. What you trying to <laughs> I was gonna get that, get that beef, that big beefy dude. But I'm, I'm big leave him alone. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna leave him alone. I'm about to mess up like Charles Barkley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pause. Pause. He's banging down in the post. Oh yeah. <laughs> when a guy is banging you. And he keep yeah. banging you. Keep banging you. <laughs> when he banging, banging you, you down low. He banging you. Banging you. Oh, banging you. <laughs> but that's the thing they're missing the the, the burly guy we can call him the burly guy down in the middle that boy had hey, whatever, the source whichever you prefer right I mean. <laughs> oh man. yeah i do think that's I, the source man hey i think uh i think the nuggets though i'm, I'm looking at their, their 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 schedule um mm-hmm. the rest of the way i i it's favorable i mean you got the knicks then you got trailblazers oh, they're gonna lose that one that, yeah <laughs> Yeah. No, no, they're not. No, they're, they're, they're not. They're gonna lose that one. Don't argue. Do not no, argue yeah. with him about the Knicks. Hold they on. gonna Hold lose on. that one. They, they're, nah, they're, nah. They play they'll, they'll beat the, the Knicks. Knicks. And they at, they at Denver. They're in Denver. Yeah. So the altitude yeah. works, oh, we bro. Care. Oh, we yeah. don't care. Okay. No, you don't hey, care. <laughs> come on up here for it. I want you to go. Hey, I'm. A, I want you to go all the way to the bottom of the arena and run up and go get you something from concessions. You might not come back. <laughs> <laughs> Altitude is no joke. Yeah. Yeah. Right ain't running nowhere, personally. Right. And not at all. Not, not at all. all. That ship just sailed a long time ago. Maybe to the bathroom, but that's about it. It <laughs> <laughs> and ain't going to make that. <laughs> uh, all right, so you got OKC in Denver. They got, they're, they're fighting for that uh, number one spot. Worst case, OKC is going to be second because um, the – I'm sorry, no, 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 the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves are only a game back. Yeah. So I'm not going to count them out. It's going to be difficult because missing those two, uh, yeah, the, two the, the two um, big guys in the middle, man, that's, that's going to be difficult for them. But I'm not going to count them out. Here's the question. The Clippers, when they started the season, they sucked. Uh, they traded for um, for uh, the fat suit dude, the and they sucked <laughs> even worse. But then all of a sudden, something clicked, and they started balling. Um, they made it to the number one seed in the West. But for whatever reason, as always, uh, well, actually, the, the, you can actually attribute it to the when Russell Westbrook got hurt. When Westbrook got hurt, they started losing. As much as folks want to fuss about Russell Westbrook <laughs> and what he brings or whatever, he brought the energy off the bench, and he got, the, he got them going. Yeah. How if, if Westbrook doesn't come back, how far do you think the Clippers can go? We're gonna, we're gonna talk I, to you first, dude. D. What did I say? What did I say the other day? And I I, I said, remember, go back. Let's go way back. How far are we going back? Way back. Let's go. As we go a little something like this, right? Hit it. Who did who did it, who was it that I said at the beginning of the season? Watch out for. You know, we can't uh, roll I, back I, that far. That's I, why we I, had you to do the audio. Remember, I, I predicted they were going to have two all-stars. Okay. The Pelicans. Uh, okay. The Pelicans on a three-game win streak. They've won eight out of their last ten. Mm-hmm. Right? They ball it. Another you know why? They are, they are going to make it because Zion Bam. is staying out the deli. And leaving leave the strippers out alone. Out of the dessert <laughs> section of the deli. Out of the pizza parlor. Right, right. So, but, but you know, I, 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 I digress. And I should say I joke because, you know, I've always liked Zion. Uh, uh, he, with the I've always, always, he was with the strippers. He was with the porn stars. I have always took up for him when y'all tried to call him fat dudes. Um, so, but I think, I think the Pelicans are playing really good ball. And I think if it comes down to them – against the Clippers in the first round, I think the Pelicans beat them in the first round, particularly if the Pelicans have home court. Okay. So I, I – and if, if Westbrook doesn't come back, uh, then I definitely see them going and losing to the Pelicans in the first round. Well, they're only a half game back in the Clippers right now. They got one, one extra loss. So uh, 
But that, that but four five, thing. that four five, gonna be a battle. I I think the Clippers are gonna move up because if you look at the too. rest of their schedule, they ain't playing nobody for the rest of their the rest of their schedule. Yeah, but they four right. games back in Minnesota. Minnesota got going a bad wrench losing losing streak though. Well, so let me see who Minnesota got. Minnesota got they got Cleveland, they got the Warriors, they'll beat the Pistons, they got the Nuggets, and they got the Bulls. Like <laughs> it, that's gonna yeah. get tight. Because them Clippers, they they can win out. Honestly, if they if they really trying to do something, mm-hmm. their toughest game is gonna be uh, uh I think the Sixers. Mm. And they I think they got them twice. They gonna play Portland back to back. They got two oh. games with Portland. Oh, uh, they play. Matter of fact, they play tonight and then on Friday. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Portland Trailblazers. Then they got the Sixers. They got the Pacers. Now Pacers could give them a little trouble, but then they got the Sixers again. And Magic and the Hornets. They they can uh, win out. And Beats will be coming back in, in, in yeah. the next week. Yeah. See, they can win out. But what? In, but in what condition? Though? Now, yeah, that, now that's yeah. the question. That's you know, the question. Knee injuries is hard to you know uh, maintain but, your conditioning, and he's always going, got kind of trouble with that. Going going to your point, D. Um, the the Pelicans, man. You, <laughs> I, I might have to agree with you. Um, the thing about the Pelicans, they got a good point guard when he's healthy, <laughs> and uh, um, uh, wow, what's the boy name? <laughs> Um, it must not be that good. CJ <laughs> McCullough, no, CJ McCullough. You know, uh, CJ has been balling when he's when he's in on the court. That that's a problem with CJ this year, being on the court. Yeah, um, they got a wing player that can give you 25 30 each night. Yeah. They got Zion, <laughs> who is a double double every night that nobody can really handle. Even though he's only six seven, they can't handle that man because he's what two eighty five. No, when right. he's in state two eighty five. They also got the big dude in the middle that they got from um, Memphis. Mm-hmm. Yep, uh, Valentunas. Valentunas. Oh yeah, yeah that, Valentunas can that's handle. That's my X factor. He he can handle a uh, Joker. He can handle Gobert. You know, so and he can also play guy, inside or not. Exactly, and he, he can pull him out. He can hit that three, like you said, dude. He's he's gonna be the X factor. So when you when you look at them, like I said, the Pelicans they were leading the league at the beginning of the season, but then all those injuries start hitting them, and they move back into the middle of the pack. But now the players are getting healthy again, and they're moving up. Mm-hmm. D, like you just said, they they won eight of the last ten games. So yeah, I, I agree with you, man. The Pelicans might might do some damage in the in the West. But I'm gonna give you that altitude issue again because I watched him. I went to a Nuggets game and I seen Valanciunas out there. When you see Joker beating him up and down the floor, that mm-hmm. altitude hurts, bro. I'm telling you, he couldn't he couldn't stay with him. And that's you talking about the Joker. He couldn't stay with him. He couldn't get up and down the floor in a half court set. Now it's a little tougher, but having to run to to get up and down the floor couldn't do it. I'm telling you, it's a monster. You cannot prepare for it unless you oh. here training. You can't prepare for it. So sidebar to, to, to this conversation, how do you prepare for the altitude endeavor? You got to be here. And, it, and and I'm telling you, the team, you can come in early. It's not going to happen in a week. It's not going to happen. I'm telling you, people that move here, you they, there's altitude sickness, man. You'll get nauseous. You get nosebleeds. You get all that stuff because you have to, your body has to now really adjust to being this high up in the air. And, and like I said, Denver, 5280. I'm at 7,000. Mm. They had five thousand, right? It's it's just different. These, that's why the Olympic Training Center is here in Colorado Springs. That's why it's here, because you can't beat you, man. Once you come here, you have to train, and you have to gut it out, and you have to go through all the that that the bad experience to get to the other side, uh, <laughs> and, and come out alive, man. It, wow, it's wow. Especially burning in your chest. Oh, man, I'm, if I go from the basement to my bedroom upstairs, I'm, I'm tired, bro. I, I, I might stop on the on the level up. Like, right, I'm gonna just sit here for a minute. <laughs> it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. Okay. Yeah, right. It's kind of like you uh, trying to run to your car. Right? Uh-huh, pretty much. Same, pretty same much. feeling. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, much, pretty much. All right. So let's go to the to the best conference uh, in the NBA, and that's the Eastern Conference. Because. Uh, well, hold up. Before I go to the East, let, let me just say this. Um, Dallas won't win 
As long as uh as Lucas as long as Lucas uh, Luke 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 shooting <laughs> Lucas shooting 90 shots a game. What about Kyrie, Kyrie though? Kyrie balling. Kyrie, Kyrie, Kyrie is having one of the best seasons of his career. I'm talking. He's having one of the best seasons of his career, and it's going unnoticed. We got we got I got to give Kyrie his due. Kyrie his due is doing play. what Kyrie does. Kyrie yeah. is doing what Kyrie does and, and hasn't made a sound, even though he has every right to fuss about what Luca has been doing to that team. He just he's just been the, the best teammate ever. He don't say anything. Yeah, uh, I need him to go back to his Boston days and start fussing about stuff because <laughs> Luca need to stop shooting. <laughs> Luca need to stop shooting past the ball. Uh, the game he had last night is is testament to as to why he needs to stop. Man, you can't shoot that it's many shots. Twenty seven, and he went four, six. Oh lord, six. six. <laughs> he was six to twenty seven. That that's horrible. Yeah, you had fifteen rebounds and fifteen assists, whatever you had. That's cool. But bro, unless you know, even with the 15 assists and the 27 shot attempts, he has the ball in his hand all the time. He has the ball all the time. But that's why Dallas will never win. Um, Phoenix Suns, Phoenix made the era of trading all of their players for, Beal. even though he was a he was a, a, a all star player, he was an injured all star player, and hasn't yeah. really played. Bradley Beal hasn't been playing as well. I, I don't really say a whole lot of bad stuff about Bradley Beal because he's from from the crib, he's from but man. Boy. But man, that, they, are, they are regretting that trade with every loss that they have because they have <laughs> but, no depth. But they have shout, no out depth to, no shout out to Isaiah Thomas. Right. Oh. They got Zeke. They got <laughs> hey, Zeke. That guy played, he played hard. He, he, he worked hard to get back to the NBA. They got, yeah. they got him yeah. they, if they allow him to play. You know, I, I want to see him at, you know, get his 20 points a game. Uh, but they're not going to, they're, they're in eighth right now. So they're in the play in. Uh, they got to play Dallas in the first, uh, first, the first play-in game. Yeah, I think that their issue is a lack of leadership, mm-hmm. on on court leadership. Uh huh. And then you go to not nine and ten, the Lakers and Golden State. And I'm like Barkley, we don't need to talk about either one of them teams. They're done. <laughs> they are. They are so done. They're done, son. Uh. So now let's go to the East. In the East, East we got brother to the East. We got uh. That team in green that we all hate. Man. Well, except the dudes. <laughs> Don't be that way, right? They, they, <laughs> they running they hey, they done ran away with it, but we know yeah. the playoffs. Now, again, and dudes, then... as I told you before, I gotta <laughs> give your boys props. They may be the best team in the league right now. Maybe they, top to bottom, they may Maybe. be the best team in the league. <laughs> but they go they like Purdue, they're gonna blow it in the playoffs. <laughs> That's what Tariq was saying. This is this yeah. is our year this time. I mean, they're, they're going to do their choking. Don't get me wrong, but I think we'll we'll, we'll eat it out. They're they going to choke. All right, you got Milwaukee coming in at number two. Now that's the team, dudes. Um, if Giannis and Dame come in this, into the playoffs healthy, how far do you think they can go? Do they have a chance against your Celtics? I think they have a chance against the Celtics. I think. Uh, I think if they, you know, put it together and, you know, something about both of those guys, they, you know, they, they're a big playoff performance. So, you know, Dame always has been, uh, and Giannis is. So I think uh, they always stand a chance. And then, you, like you say, you got the X factor with the Celtics where, you know, you keep it close, they'll blow it in the end. So, I mean, I think Milwaukee, like I say, you know, they're a playoff pedigree. I think they, they'll, they'll do it just fine. They won't be the Celtics, but, you know, they can compete. All right, and then uh, we got the Cleveland Cavaliers, who probably the most overlooked team in all of uh, the NBA. Nobody pays attention to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, they don't even get um, national TV games anymore. I they haven't say, been I on national TV in a while. <laughs> um, but they have the third best record in the East. And they have some good players. They got Donovan Mitchell, who should be a Nick. Um, Jared and, Allen. We'll be, and we'll be next year. Uh, <laughs> they got, like I said, Jared Allen. Uh, they have a pretty good, a pretty deep bench this year when they went out and got um, uh, the, the dude from Miami. Um, uh, what's his name? Dude, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, uh, um, Struce. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
when they got Struz, right. so they, they, they have a pretty good, pretty good bench now. Um, they need to get healthy also. But so does Cleveland have a chance, Doran? No. <laughs> Why you gotta like so, that? So emphatic. <laughs> but, um, but think about it. Okay, honestly, the fact that they are the number three seed, and you haven't heard about them. The fact that they haven't had any games on TV, despite the fact that they've been winning these games, means that the NBA hasn't seen it as a priority to put them on. Mm-hmm. And what you notice about them when they play is they don't beat the teams they don't beat the teams that they should compete with mm-hmm. they get up for big games mm-hmm. they you know um uh, well but even so they still not getting over the hump they not beating boston you don't see them beating boston and, and beating milwaukee and, and beating those teams they beat up on the lower teams but every time i've ever seen cleveland play a big game they lose so I don't see them winning. If they stay at three, if they if they're playing, you know, the Sixers, you know, if they play the three, the the seven, you know, if they stay at three, which it looks like they're they're a game and a half up. So if they stay at three, they're gonna what? Either be playing the Sixers or they're gonna be playing the Pacers. Mm -hmm. Right? They'll beat them. But having in that set in that in that second round, I, I don't I don't think they'll come out of the second round. I don't, I don't think they make it to the I don't think that they make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. They make it to the semifinals. I, I don't think they're the mm-hmm. so, And then we come to the best team in the in, in the East. Oh God, no. <laughs> and that is the New York Knicks. Oh. So Reed. How they, how they the best team in the East and they at fourth? <laughs> That's because we was hurt, man. We had all these and injuries. It, suck. it has it, nothing to do with hurt. Yeah. They're the best fourth place team in the East. <laughs> best yeah. fourth place team ever. <laughs> We're the best fourth place team ever. But oh. all right, don't oh. let don't don't let us be the only ones to bust your bubble. Go ahead, Tariq. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, and get yeah, you some. Go ahead, say something bad no, about the Knicks. Look, tell me, okay. tell me, okay. about these Knicks. This is how you look, 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 look. Okay, I'm a New Yorker from New York. Mm-hmm. I'm from Brooklyn. Uh huh. Okay. Um. I'm I'm at the point to where now I'm, I, I equate the Knicks to the Cowboys. <laughs> All right, we go. We go. Cowboy fan too. We go. Cowboy fan too. Yeah. Uh, exactly. What a new one. What a new one. What a new one. You got to stop setting yourself up. I got to find a new Yes. Exactly. Oh, we equate man. that too. Uh, oh, that is come hilarious. on. I, I can't. So now you know why he's so delusional. <laughs> <laughs> Look at here. Uh, uh, no. All right. Not 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 speaking speaking serious here. When you look at <laughs> look at my Knicks roster, top to bottom, when we are healthy, the only uh, team, the only team that has more talent than the Knicks is that team up the highway in, in green. That, that's it. Uh, that's why we have to get the third, the third seed, so we don't don't have to meet Boston until we get to the final. <laughs> <laughs> we go, we go, uh, because we can beat, we can beat the Bucks. They can beat the Bucks. Boston, Boston, they proven they can beat the Bucks. But Boston has been kicking our butts all season. They've been yeah. murdering us all season. So the only chance we have is to get that that uh the third seed so that we can meet them in the finals. If we can, if we can get that we can meet them in the finals. But we got to get help. Been playing, playing pretty good for the Bucks too, right? So I mean who Middleton? Yeah, he's been playing pretty good lately. <laughs> hey, Middleton has been horrible. After you ain't watched hey. him since he got back. Right. I, I seen him have a good I, game the other day. I heard Middleton a lot has of, been horrible. I, I heard a lot of ifs. And what I've always been told is if if we get all 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 we get
I that was the greatest thing night, Dallas man. ever gave us. Was it's brush. like he's getting better and better. Every he's game. He's already good. He's already Every great, game. But he's getting better and better. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I guess they could, they could give you something, but that's about it. If, 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 um, if, um, Randall and, uh, Randall, R- R- mainly Randall, if Randall doesn't come back, oh, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We got to get OG back. When, when OG's on the team, we got a, def- a wing defender that no one can, can get past. Yeah. Without him on there, he's struggling with, uh, with, um, uh, what's his face? Um, another, yeah, struggling with him. <laughs> you just getting drunker and drunker. That's a whole. That's a whole that's I'm, just saying. I'm just saying. All right, the rest of the the rest of the East, Orlando. Please, please move on. <laughs> Orlando is probably about two. They're probably about two years away. This this is not their year. They they need a couple more pieces to uh to go ahead and be contenders. Philly has to get healthy also. If Embiid doesn't come back, they one and done. Uh, Indiana. <laughs> Indiana made their move with trying to get uh, Siakam, but that hasn't that – they've actually gone the opposite direction since they traded for him. Um, and moved down seven. The Heat, the heat is, a, is a difficult team to, to, yeah. to measure, man. man. A rough team there, boy. Yeah. They, they're, they're a hard team to measure, man, because at the end of the day, it's still the Heat. You know, yeah, and they fight their way through everything. Yeah, even though they're, they're right now their record might not be as great as they would like it to be, but come you know, playoff like time, the, man, the NBA equivalent of Jason. Uh, uh, <laughs> they don't die; they come back every year. <laughs> right, they frightening. Right. So I, I I just don't know what to say say about them. Chicago, Chicago is is in the, Chicago and Atlanta. They like the Lakers and uh. And go to state. Yeah, yeah. They, they ain't gonna do it this year. Yeah, they ain't. They ain't, they, they ain't gonna do it this year. Yeah. But uh, but it's one thing I do know: these last twelve games, 12, 13 games. Some teams have twelve. Some teams have thirteen. Gonna be great. These next three weeks of, of NBA basketball is gonna be great. Um, and then uh, after that, we get to the playoff season, where my Knicks will go ahead and do their thing. And we'll be racing the uh They're about gonna do their thing, right. <laughs> <laughs> thing all right. Do their thing all right. Is it still the Davy O'Brien? Look, you don't even know what the y'all y'all ain't seen it in so long that you don't <laughs> even know what the name of it is. Nineteen seventy, seventy two, or seventy five times. <laughs> right, he don't know. Roddy don't even know what the name of it is. So, I, I don't know, D. That's I how you know the next I was about to say the Lombardi. <laughs> It may as well be for you all, right? right. right. For all you Knicks fans, because y'all the ain't getting either one. Next year. Yeah, they're not getting either oh, one. Oh, boy. right, right. But hey, man, I know, uh, I know, Tariq got to go, yeah. uh, brother. I it it was a, a play. It was a pleasure meeting you. Obviously, you know that's why we right. stayed in contact or whatever. But no, it was a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, being able to to see you again and holler at you again, man, and we we have sure. to do this again sometime if you want to. Yeah, for sure, man. You can definitely come on and talk about Rodney's Knicks anytime. You are more than yeah, welcome yeah, to talk about the Knicks and the, and the Cowboy and the Cowboy. Yeah, oh, you gotta please. call them. I got plenty for that. I'm okay, look at him. <laughs> I'll make sure I have some more. Hey, y'all gonna have some more followers when I get on here, get on the Cowboys. <laughs> but, <laughs> look at but, oh, looking forward to that. Yes, can, <laughs> cannot wait. So, but bro, thank you, thank you so much. You honored us, with, honored us with your presence, privileged us uh, with your knowledge and your information, man. And, and we do, we we thank you so much uh, for coming on and hollering at us, man. And you know, glad, uh, and other than that, on a personal note, man, for real, glad to know you, for real, for sure. Yeah, man. Glad to be, hey. glad to think of you as a friend, man, for real. Yeah. I so, ladies and that. gentlemen, all all of Tariq's uh, followers, uh, you can subscribe. <laughs> <follow us. laughs> hit that hit that like button. Hit subscribe. <laughs> you and you yeah. can also follow us. Uh, I can't even find a stupid thing no more, man. Especially if you hate the Cowboys and the Knicks. And it, right, uh, right. here this, you go. And it was it the the that one or is it this one? Wait a minute. That's the website. Okay, Bibpodcast.com. That's Blame right. on the Boogie Podcast.com. You can find us at from the Boogie on YouTube and Instagram and, and all that stuff. And this is uh, the email address that I hate. 
That's okay though. It's our email address. <laughs> Boogie Blaming. I hate, I hate the name of that man, Boogie Blaming. It just sounds stupid. I don't know. But as, as D said, push that like button, push that subscribe button, push that follow button, send dudes the money. Uh, if you like what we had to say today, we thank you. We we enjoy you being here. Um, but if you didn't like what we had to say, oh, kiss it. And on behalf of <laughs> Durin, Dues, and Reek, we out. Don't blame it on sunshine. Don't blame it on moonlight. Don't blame it on good times. Even on the boogie. Everybody needs boogie for all my peeps here in Long and back on to the Illy and everywhere. Let's do it, y'all. Whether evading the smoke or debating with folks, aka in the quotes that's making this world when the sports world is sleepy on the day or the week. You get it, Miles One, Ride D, Kid, Dudes, and Geeky. From Hardwood to Diamond, QD to Rhyming on the up or declining, and all out shining, even on the ice grinding. A world record time, and when the athlete or team moment really is defining. If the stats that deal or facts on deals, these cats chat real about the track and field. Plus the wing ring and pool, all courts and courses from unsigned players to stars with endorsements who only got deep. Teams that stop streets, who get in the dust and who own the hot seat for the movies and the oldies. Yo, they got the goodies, wanna know what's going on? Rock blame it on the boogie. Yup, 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 blame it on the boogie. Yep. The boogie. Yep. The boogie. Click that link and subscribe. That's what it is. God bless you.